a blinding light, and the plane started to speed towards the mountains. Julianne's ears filled with the deafening roar of a crashing plane and the screams of the frightened passengers. Suddenly, everything goes quiet. Julianne is free-falling to the ground. The next thing she knows is that her body is riddled with injuries. She was alone in a rainforest, peppered with the bodies of passengers, and the only food she could find was a bag of candy. Hello everyone, and welcome to our newest episode on The Lone Survivor of Lanza Flight 508 Plane Crash. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel before we dive into the miraculous survival story of Julianne. Click on that little bell so you'll never miss our stories. Their flight from Lima to Pucallpa was seven hours delayed. 17-year-old Julianne Kiopke and her mother Maria Kiopke were eager to get home to their father. After all, it was Christmas Eve. Her mother had wanted to go home earlier on, but Julianne had begged to delay their trip. Her high school dance and graduation were on December 22nd and 23rd. She didn't want to miss it. After a long wait, the plane was finally ready to take off. Had the passengers known what was going to happen, they would have gladly spent their Christmas at the airport instead. Maria generally did not like flying. Julianne, on the other hand, absolutely loved it. Thrilling adventures were always a part of Julianne's life. Her father was a biologist and her mother was an ornithologist. Her parents established a research station in the Amazon rainforest when Julianne was 14, and she happily became a jungle child. She spent her days in the forest, homeschooled by her parents and learning survival techniques. The educational authorities disapproved, and Julianne was forced to attend a regular school. But little did the authorities know that the things she learnt while in the forest would save her life a few years later. The first half of the flight was uneventful. No one could predict the disaster looming ahead. What's the worst that could happen in a one-hour flight? As the flight attendants started to clean up, huge thunderclouds gathered ahead. The sensible thing would have been to fly over the storm. No one could understand why the pilots decided to take their chances and fly through the raging storm. However, Julianne's father had warned them not to book that airline since it had a poor reputation. The pilots sealed everyone's fate as they tried to navigate the plane through the storm. Daylight turned to night, and heavy turbulence shook the plane violently. The aircraft was thrashing up and down like a wild bull trying to fling off its passenger. Lightning flashed from all directions. Parcels and luggage started falling from the lockers. Gifts, flowers, and Christmas cakes were flying around the cabin. Sandwich trays soared through the air, and half-finished drinks spilled all around. Amidst the screaming and crying, Julianne's mother whispered, I hope this will go all right. After about 10 minutes of this chaos, Julianne saw a blinding white light over the right wing. She didn't know whether it was lightning or an explosion. The airplane began to nosedive, and Julianne lost all sense of time. Lightning had struck the engine, which exploded as a result. The right wing of the plane caught fire, damaging the integrity of the lining of the flight. Despite the pilot's efforts to control the plane and take his passengers to safety, the plane was already starting to fall apart. The severe turbulence overloaded the left wing, causing further damage. The plane began to fall to pieces as it spun out of control. The cabin split open, and everyone was losing hope. Julianne remembered how she and her mother held hand, speechless in terror. The noise was deafening. The roar of the crashing plane, metal grating on metal as it fell apart. The screams of the people in fear and pain. Over all the chaos, Julianne heard her mother say calmly, that is the end. It's all over. Those were the last words Julianne ever heard from her mother. Suddenly, everything goes quiet. Julianne was still strapped onto her seat, but her mother was no longer at her side. Julianne was no longer in the plane. She was still trapped into her seat, but the entire bench was falling. From an altitude of about 10,000 feet, Julianne fell from the crashing aircraft. Her freefall was quiet. She could not see anything as she fell to the ground head first. The seatbelt was squeezing her so tight that she was starting to suffocate. 
Thankfully, before the terror of crashing into the mountains overcame her, Julianne lost consciousness. Hours passed at the Pucallpa airport, but Flight 508 had yet to return. There were no messages from the flight either. The airport crew called for an urgent aerial search, but it wasn't easy to find the aircraft. Since the plane broke apart to pieces two miles above the ground, it did not break the trees as it fell. The plane just disappeared into the jungle and was unnoticeable from the air, and the heavy rain had quickly put out the fire. Added to this was the fact that no one knew at which part of the journey the plane crashed, so they could not pinpoint the location to send out a search party. After a few days, the search was called off. After all, who could survive such a crash? Julianne regained consciousness the next day. She had landed in the middle of the jungle. The first thought she had was, I survived an air crash. Wet and muddy and covered with injuries, Julianne sank into an uncomfortable sleep for the rest of the day. The first thing she saw when she opened her eyes the next morning were the crowns of giant trees standing above her, bathed in golden light. Where was she? Julianne felt disorientated. She was nauseous, and her head was about to explode in pain. Julianne checked herself for any serious injuries. Her collarbone was broken, there were gashes on her left leg and right arm, and her right eye was swollen shut. She later realized that she had also ruptured a ligament in her knee, but she could still manage to walk. As if Julianne didn't have enough trouble on her hands already, her glasses were also missing, and she was extremely nearsighted. Again and again, Julianne called for her mother. She crawled around as best as she could, looking for her mother. But the jungle was silent. If Julianne had not been homeschooled at her parents' research station when she was a young girl, she would have been completely lost. The looming trees and the strange insects would have surely terrified her motionless otherwise. Julianne's survival instincts kicked in. She knew how likely it was to lose your orientation inside the dense forest, and so left markings on the trees. Julianne listened to the gurgling of a waterway and walked towards it. Julianne found a bag of candy. This bag of candy would be her only source of food until she got help. Finding a small spring also gave her some hope. Now she had some sort of food and plenty of water to drink. Besides, springs lead to streams, which lead to rivers. And around rivers, there was bound to be people. With this renewed hope, Julianne began her journey of survival. But she was barely hanging on to life. Her wounds had gotten infested with maggots. The nearsightedness made it nearly impossible for her to see anything beyond her reach. A few days after the crash, she ran into an airplane bench. The passengers were still buckled in, but they were long dead rammed headfirst onto the earth. Julianne was paralyzed by panic. She'd never seen a dead body before. The days were scorching hot, and she suffered second-degree burns. But the nights were freezing cold. Her flimsy mini dress was not enough to protect her from the heat or the cold. When her bag of candy finished, Julianne worried that she might die of starvation. As the days dragged on, Julianne started to lose track of time. She had waded through the stream in the hopes of finding help. Without proper food, Julianne was getting weaker and her injuries were worsening by the day. Her eyes and ears started fooling her as she sees a roof of a house or hears chickens clucking at every turn. After 10 days of trudging through the forest, Julianne finally comes across a boat. For a moment, she wonders if this is another trick of her mind. Rolly floods her as she laid her hand on it and felt it solid and real. But there didn't seem to be any people around. Julianne didn't want to steal the boat, so she simply lay there. The next morning, a group of fishermen found her and took her to their village. The following day, she was taken to a hospital in Pucalpa, where Julianne was reunited with her father. They could barely speak as they held each other. It was then that Julianne realized that she was the only person who had returned from the crash. With Julianne's help, the rescue teams were able to locate the crash site and find the bodies of the other passengers. Julianne was the only passenger left alive from the Lanza plane crash. Several days later, they come across Julianne's mother's body. They find out that she too had survived the crash, 
but was severely injured and could not move. She had died a few days afterwards. Julianne's miraculous story of survival was widely reported. Her experience was later made into a movie and a documentary. In 2011, Julianne released her autobiography, recounting her journey, titled When I Fell From The Sky. Despite the harrowing experience, Julianne retained her love of flying. Nightmares still followed her, but she pushed past her trauma and became the biologist she had always wanted to be. What would you have done if you were thrown out of a plane into the Amazon? Let us know in the comments below. And remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.